Sheldon Johnson recently went on the Joe Rogan podcast as an ex-con and criminal justice advocate. And when I saw him, he had a bunch of jewelry on. He was with his girlfriend. She had a bunch of jewelry on. I said, hey, man, where's my money at? So I robbed him. And his girlfriend happened to be there. And um, I had a bunch of young guys with me. And they robbed her as well. Another guy that I ran into, he also owed me some money. Did he get physically hurt? No. He didn't get touched. Got roughed up a little bit, but... But just 33 days later... A disturbing discovery in the Bronx where police found a dismembered body in an apartment. Where the New York Times reports Johnson as a youth worker that was just charged with murder. As in a Bronx apartment, two shots were heard. A man shouted, please don't, I have a family. Two more shots were heard. And then allegedly Johnson was seen leaving the apartment with cleaning supplies, a blue bin, and then even a blonde wig. But when the cops arrived, they knocked on the victim's door and Johnson answered. The detectives then got a search warrant for his apartment and found the victim's torso and feet inside the bin with his legs, arms, and head in the freezer. As apparently his previous case and long incarceration had public efforts to grant him clemency with a fundraising page describing him as a community leader, creative writer, and a thespian. Now that fundraiser linked appears to be gone now, but it always amazes me how badly some people will bend over backwards to defend known criminals, conveniently omitting the fact that they weren't arrested for just sitting at home creative writing and thespianing. They were incarcerated for several decades over horrendous crimes committed that they were actually convicted of. Now do I think our criminal justice system has issues that must be addressed? Of course it does. But I'm just sick of progressives simping over felons just because after they're convicted and incarcerated, then they feel remorse. As the man that brought him on Joe's show is so proud to platform him. Is it that all people of color get disparate sentences? Oh, absolutely. That's why I thought that this is an important conversation to have and getting to know Sheldon just thought that he, uh, he has a remarkable story to tell and a perspective on, on his circumstances, the system, and he's someone that's taken responsibility for what he did and I think is a living example of what can happen if we think long and hard about um, if someone's life is worth just throwing away and putting behind uh, bars so that they can rot in a dank cell because he would have been 70 years old when he got out way past his life expectancy. Even though a lot of his statements were awfully contradictory. And I the was, rules of the prison or the rules, the rules of the streets? Of the, gang. the rules the of the gang. street. So I was a rule guy and they just, you know, it was to their advantage to get me out of the way. There was a lot of infighting, sets against sets, and I was just always against that. As it's now believed the guy he shot and chopped up was over a prison beef between different sets of bloods. But this isn't the only convict this guy has brought on the Joe Rogan Experience podcast. And I don't have to agree with everything this guy does, but it doesn't mean we have to ignore how he pretty much enabled another murder all in the name of his progressive ideologies. Because I do see some comments on Joe's YouTube clips calling out Rogan for platforming this previous and soon to be prisoner. But I honestly think it's good to hear from the other side because it isn't hard to see that although Johnson's buddy is watching him speak with glee, it never really seemed like he had genuinely changed his mentality. And I think it's important for the masses to witness this firsthand, unfiltered in a long form podcast format. And only then can you really start to generate your own opinion on the issues. My concern now is, even though Joe has just made it back on YouTube seven days ago, he's already had Riley Gaines dropping red pills on a show that pretty much breaks all the pronoun rules that most channels must abide by. And now YouTube has to decide, do they want all those precious ad dollars that Joe will bring to the platform, or will they shut him down in the name of controlling the flow of information? So if you laughed, or maybe even learned something, hopefully I've earned your subscription, then go check out the video on how the left always ends up eating itself.